We're here this week for the Connect Lax Pick'em with Connor Entman. Connor, tell us a little bit about yourself and we'll get into it. Yeah, great to be here. Uh, played at Cornell between 2010 and 2014. Good uh, years. Good years. Had a great time. Excited to be here in front of the camera. Great. So, uh, yeah, get into the picks. You tell us a little bit about the format, um, how we're going to be you know, talking about the teams, your uh, dark horses and you know picks of the week. Yeah, you know, I guess a little bit of a rundown here. Yeah, for sure. We'll uh, we'll start with the matchups. I mean, we'll uh, give it to the winners from last year. We'll start with Denver out in Air Force. Um, first things first, Air Force is not an easy place to play by any means. There's been a lot of tight games out there over the past few years. Um, so I expect them to come out fighting in this uh, home opener for them against the national champions. Um, that being said, uh, Denver's immensely talented this year. Right. Um, and looking at the stats, at least from Air Force's game against Navy, um, face-offs are going to be a bit of an issue for them. And going against Denver with Trevor Baptiste, mm -hmm. um, that's not the guy that you want to be going up against at the X right now. Um, so I expect Denver to kind of get out there early, start swinging. Um, they've had some big scrimmages with Team USA and Johns Hopkins already. Sure. Um, so I expect them to come out really quick. Um, they're going to get those extra possessions from Baptiste, and our offense is going to be humming pretty quickly. Sure. So I've been hearing a lot about Canzaro. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. So Connor Canzaro is the talk of the town right now. Um, you know, preseason first team All American. A lot of a lot of people picking him to win the Tuaron Trophy this year. Um, not enough can be said about the kid. I mean, he's exceptional, exceptional quickness, great hands, can shoot it, can dish the rock. He's going to be in charge of running the offense this year out in Denver, and he's uh, certainly got a lot of weapons at his disposal. Um, playing with him in six on six situations. Um, I look at a guy like Tyler Pace, who's uh, you know put up 50 points last year and is a midfielder and a you know a Final Four team and national championship team. That's that's a that's a lot of good production. Yeah. Um, and I feel like he's kind of flying under the radar right now, and I expect a big year out of him as uh, as Denver gets rolling here. Yeah, you love to hear those guys are flying under the radar. You know they. They come up and make a lot of surprises and really, yeah. really produce for the team. So yeah. that's and exciting I, to watch. I mean, one thing I would say is I, I don't think uh, people haven't valued his, you know, his stats or anything. But I think he's kind of been lost in the limelight behind a guy like Westberg sure. or Zach Miller, or Connor Canizaro. And now the Westberg's graduated, and Canizaro's going to be handling the ball a little bit more from down, down low. Sure. And now Tyler Pace is going to be the, kind of that guy that teams have to worry about from up top in the midfield. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, let's continue on. Yeah, and then one thing I would say about Denver is uh, they are filling in some holes from the back end. I mean, they lost their goalie uh, to graduation. They also lost their long stick committee. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Defensively, last year, I felt like they kind of got over the hump from years past where they kind of got stopped in the Final Four. Sure. Last year, their defense was very solid and was able to you know propel them to a national championship. Um, with Trevor Baptiste, I will say that as – as they get accustomed to filling in those holes, you know, he, him giving them extra possessions will get them the experience of getting their feet wet, and they'll probably be able to ease into it a little bit more than your average team in the NCAA. Right. Um, that being said, um, in this matchup, I just don't see how Air Force is going to be able to stop the firepower that Denver has. I expect it to be a pretty, uh, pretty easy win for them. I'd say about 15 to seven. You think it's going to be a shootout then? It would be a shootout. I mean, they're just they're, they're too high flying on offense, sure. and uh, like I said, the the rate of, the, the rate that they're getting the ball right now is just going to be out of this world. It could arguably be the best in the country, um, and with that offense having extra possessions, it's not going to be a good good look for anyone else. Yeah, well, it'll be fun to watch Denver uh, put up some goals this year. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So you said uh, Maryland Navy. That's the next matchup here. Yeah, that's one of the heavyweight matchups this week. Um, a lot Exciting. of people, a lot of people like Navy um, coming out of the season. Uh, they return a lot. A lot of veteran leadership. A lot of All American candidates, especially on defense. Um, a goalie that's played played in some big games. And then you have Maryland, who lost to Denver in the national championship last year. Um, one thing I would say about Navy is they're unlucky to be going into College Park in a home opener, especially with a team that's hungry to kind of get over the hump, like Denver did at one point, right. where Maryland has been on the cusp of winning a national title, but they haven't just got, uh, got there yet. They, uh, they come out with a vendetta right now. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I expect them to come out with a, uh, a lot of focus. Um, I expect them to come out of the gate relatively quickly. Um, the biggest thing for Maryland right now is how they're going to replace Charlie Rafa from last year. Sure. Um, their face-off guy for the last two or three years, and has been exceptional. All of a sudden, your face-off X uh, is empty with Rafa's graduation. However, on both sides of the face-off X, you've got a really balanced offense. You've got guys like Matt sure. Rambo, uh, Tim right. Rotan's coming off of injury. I expect a lot of things out of him, even though he didn't play much last year. Um, and then you've got Henry West, Brian Cole, um, some great guys at the midfield. And then the defense, you have you know first-team All-American candidates and Matt Dunn and Kyle Burnmore in goal. Mm -hmm. um, so if Maryland can figure out the face-off situation, 
um, they should keep humming along and they could you know, make a run to the Final Four. So they, they have a lot of returners this year, right? They do. They're a very senior-laden team, um, and they, Coach Shilma does a really good job of you know, making sure that his teams have great senior leadership. Um, I would say the one thing that with Charlie Roffle leaving, um, they're going to have a – I could see them having a hard time reacting to having to play a little bit more of an equal possession game. I mean, they've had the right. luxury, like Denver – of having possessions tilted, you know, 65-35 in their favor. That's huge. And the defense has been right. great, regardless of personnel-wise, but what happens when Maryland has to defend those extra possessions? And all of a sudden, it's not tilted in their favor. I could see that being a bit of an issue, but that being said, um, there's just too much talent on the back end. I love their D-middies as well. Your yep. D-middies are going to be incredibly valuable. Any team that's trying to make a Final Four run, you got to have trust in your D-middies. Unsung heroes. Maryland's got a few of them that have right. played in some huge games over the last few years. Um, so I expect that defense to be very solid. I expect it to be a little bit closer than people might think because I, I do think Navy's a team that no one's going to want to play in the springtime. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, in College Park, I'll take the Terps 11-7. Great. Yeah, interesting matchups we got here. So, you know, a lot of exciting things going on right here, but, you know, what, what's the next step? Well, the next step, we'll go down to uh, Charlottesville, um, another Titanic matchup this week. Uh, it's kind of going to... Too many to count, almost. Yeah, it's, it's a good Love week. It. You know, a lot of teams are trying to get those big games in before they get into conference play. Um, so you look at Virginia and Loyola right now. I look at two teams that both had very disappointing seasons last year, um, maybe for different reasons. I mean, you look at Virginia with uh, some huge injuries last year. They're starting defenseman in Tanner Scales, uh, starting attackman in Jim Spinell. Now those guys come back. And because of those injuries last year, Virginia had a very young defense in front of Matt Barrett, who's an excellent goalie. Mm -hmm. um, now that Tanner Scales is back, and all of those guys that had to get jumped in and get easy or big minutes um, from the start of last season, now you have a very experienced group on the back end. And the defense, Huge. I expect, to be very strong. You've got a great goalie. And on the other side, the offense is Virginia. They're always a high-flying team. They always mm -hmm. can shoot the ball deep um, with a lot of power. So I expect Virginia to have a really good year this year. I actually have them in my final four picks. We'll get to that later. Yeah. Um, but I, I like what I see on both sides of the ball. The issue is going to be uh, face-offs for them. It has been for a long time now. Um, it's, it's kind of a question mark. I mean, in the past, they've had Mick Parks there. Right now, they're trying to figure out a replacement for him. So Virginia might have some struggles um, at the face-off X um, early on in the season. So as seems to be a common theme with a lot of these teams this year. A lot, of, a lot of loss in the faceoffs. Yeah, well, faceoffs. Uh, we've had the we've had some tremendous faceoff guys over these past two years. I mean, look at Charlie Roth. We look at Brendan Fowler, sure. Duke. Right. Um, there, there were guys that were All American candidates, and they were just they were making their making their teams have an easy game plan because they knew they were going to get the ball so often, and they could uh, they could train around that. That being said, with Virginia going in against Loyola this week. Uh, Loyola's got a guy that's winning 60% of his uh, face-offs in Graham Savio. Crazy. Um, Crazy. And I'll actually say this, Loyola's first-line midfield can probably go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, any, toe -to -toe with anyone in the country. Wow. Um, you got Brian Sherlock, Ramar Davis, and uh, Jeff Chase. Mm -hmm. And you know, going up against Virginia's first line, which is you know, equally as impressive, uh, I expect Loyola to actually come out of Charlottesville with a win this week um, because of the face-off battle. I see these lineups as relatively even on, on both sides of the ball. And in a, in a one goal game, you know, you want that guy that's winning 60% at a clip and you can trust him in the crunch time moments. So I'm going with Loyola and a barn burner 10 9. Oh, man, that's a big game to watch. Such a DVRs for that. Yeah. yeah. So um, Duke Lehigh heading down south, yeah, right? Everyone's going to want to talk about Duke this year with all the superstars they got. You know, I know My right? Miles Jones, obviously, freaking nature. And you also got Deemer Class. Yeah. I and mean, the one two punch at the midfield is always going to be the top concern for most teams as, mm -hmm. uh, as we go into this season. Um, what I look at Duke, it's similar to Virginia. When they've had a lot of young guys on defense last year, they had a freshman in goal for most of the year. They had a lot of freshmen on defense, and they went through some growing pains last year. But now mm -hmm. they come back as sophomores. They're going to have a better transition into the fall from the spring. And uh, I expect Duke's defense to ramp it up quite a bit. But this really has all to do with Duke's offense. I mean, Duke right. with Miles Jones, Zemer Class, and then you've got the guys down at attack, and a guy like Case Mathias, who's a senior now, mm -hmm. Jack Bruckner, and uh, Justin Gutterding. I mean, that's a really powerful top six. And for Lehigh, you know, I expect Lehigh to trust their two captains down low, and Trip Telesco yep. and uh, Chase Kazawinski. Um, they're going to – I expect them to push the ball behind the goal and try and get the ball out of Miles Jones and Deemer Class's sticks and try and make those attack and play in one-on-one -on -one situations. 
And I really don't know if Lehigh's going to be able to do that for four quarters, but I think that's the game plan they got to do. They got to try and slow down Miles Jones. They got to try and keep the ball away from Deemer Class in room and time situations. And then on the offensive side, they're really going to have to give the ball to Reed Weber, who's a senior now, mm -hmm. scored 50 points a year ago, and he's going to wow. be the guy that they're going to trust and not turn the ball over, try and make it a half field game and try and slow down Duke a little bit. Because if it gets into a track meet, it's going to go in Duke's favor. They've got too much firepower. Um, they're also going on to Coskin Stadium in Durham, which is not an easy place to play. Right. Lee has a very young team. So with that being said, I would say Duke's going to win relatively easy. It's going to be high score, and they'll all go 19-11. Oh, wow. It's going to be a great game. Yeah, it's, it's been really interesting to watch the, the progression of Miles Jones from his freshman year to now, you know, becoming a, a you know, full all-around athlete. Yeah, I mean, when we, when we played Miles Jones, he was a freshman, I played him in the Final Four with Cornell, and, you know, he was still so raw as, mm -hmm. a, as a lacrosse player, but you could just see, you could see the potential there, and the transition he made from freshman year to the second-line midfielder to sophomore year was absolutely tremendous. Everyone saw what happened. He all of a sudden became a huge threat for both hands, shooting on the run, and then he got that element of passing into his game, and now he is what he is. Um, he's right. definitely going to be the talk of the Twarton Trophy uh, candidates. And, uh, you know, at, at, at the start of the season, I think you got to put him number one. I mean, Duke's just too high-powered, too well-coached. Um, right. They're going to have they're gonna have a lot of big games to play. And he shines in the best moments, which is what you love to see out of a guy who's also a right. senior captain now. Yeah, and it's interesting to see that now a lot of coaches are starting to recruit more of like those raw athletes yeah. in comparison to the refined athletes where they can take someone like that and mold them into – to the player that they are, yeah, and for mix sure. them in with other players who are as talented, at, you know, as in deep as Cornell and the Dukes, yeah, etc. Absolutely. I mean, with uh, with those athletes, if you if you hit on just one of them, if you take two or three athletes that are a little bit raw coming out of high school, mm -hmm. and you hit on one of them, you get a guy that can be potentially Miles Jones, yep. and those guys can change a program over their four years while they're in school. Um, and it's it, it's uh, it's becoming a bigger bigger part of the sport, and it's not going to stop anytime soon. Yeah, yeah, it's exciting, real exciting. So, your dark horses, you know, we talked about the, the highlight guys, the ones, you know, the teams that are obviously glowing everybody's eyes, but tell me about the dark horses. Yeah, for sure. I'll give you four. Uh, we'll start off with Navy, as I mentioned. Uh, Navy, Navy's one and one to start the year. Uh, they had a tough loss to Johns Hopkins in double overtime last mm. week. Um, but I expect them to be one of the best teams in the Patriot League. I'll actually say that they're going to win the Patriot League this year. Wow. Um, they got a lot of veterans on both sides of the ball. It's kind of been a slow process for Rick Soule down there, um, but I finally think uh, Navy gets over the hump, gets back into the playoff mix with a Patriot League berth. Mm -hmm. um, they've got a few All-American candidates on the back end. They've got a senior in Pat Kena at Attack, who's kind of running the show for them and has had a great start to the year. So I really like Navy to win the Patriot League, and I don't think a lot of teams are going to want to play them in, Mar or in May because of that defense. Yeah. Um, another one, we'll go a little bit further out west, we'll go to Penn State. Uh, Penn State's been a, a, a team like Jeff Chambroni when he jumped over there, a big culture change, and uh, immediately started piling up on big-time recruits. Um, yeah. It's taken a little bit of uh, time for them to get into the series contention. They unfortunately had a bit of an issue with the CAA a few years ago. They prevented them from getting a conference berth. That's cool. um, but that being said, uh, they've, they've got the perfect blend of guys that have been in the system with Coach Champaroni for a few years now on both sides of the ball. And they've got a superstar freshman in Grant Amet who's going to put up big numbers immediately. Real and exciting. the one thing that Coach Champaroni uh, is gonna be the one asset that Coach Zambroni has this year is his experience with tragedy. Um, you know, when, when he was at Cornell and George Boyardi passed away, that was right, a you know right. very trying time. And Cornell was able to go through, win the Ivy League, make the quarterfinals that year. Um, Penn State had a similar tragedy this year. They're starting goalie, so C Coach Zambroni's been there, done that. He'll know how to handle his players and get right. them through such a tough time. But it, during the springtime here, I expect them to do big things. Uh, we'll say that they get in the tournament as well. Yeah, it's interesting to watch that. So we'll, uh, we'll go to a, a little bit of a homer pick here, but I really like where Cornell's at right now. Um, <laughs> Got to give the hometown love. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, the thing with Cornell right now, they did lose a, a, quite a bit of senior leadership from last year. Um, some huge holes to fill. Sure. Um, All-American candidates with Matt Donovan, Connor Busick, uh, Jordan Stevens in the back end on defense. You're going to have to fill those guys in, um, and that's not going to be easy. That being said, I don't think a lot of people have realized that Cornell has kind of had this system of plugging people back into holes and getting you know the same type of production over the course of time. Mm -hmm. um, so I trust Coach Kerwick and the players up there to get it done. Um, I like what they have on defense. They have a lot of guys that have played some big minutes there. And defense I like, wins games, right? Absolutely, especially yeah. when you're playing in the cold. You want that defense to lean on and you know and, and be able to trust in the crunch time moments. 
Um, and with Cornell, I do I really like their freshman class. They got two attackmen that potentially could be starting, and they're gonna this, these two names are gonna be two names that people will remember for a long time over these next four years. Are Ryan Bray and Colton Rupp. I expect them to be starting an attack this year. And remember when, those. And whenever you have a, a, a few freshmen starting an attack, and you can build a foundation around them. You know that's very that's very saying or very telling of how good they're going to be in the long run. Excellent. Um, so I expect Cornell to have a better year than most people have uh, have them doing right now. Great. And then my final one is Georgetown, kind of similar to Coach Ambroni at Penn State. Uh, Georgetown has had uh, a few years of a culture change with their own with Coach Warren. Um, they've had some big moments, big moments where they've lost by a goal or two. They've lost to Duke. They've lost to Denver. Mm -hmm. um, but now I think the same thing with is, is, is Penn State is they've had the culture kind of influ influenced into their program. They've got in some big time recruits. They've had some great freshmen. They're going to get some big minutes this year. And they also have guys like Craig Burge, um, Eduardo White, and uh, Pete Connolly who have been there for two or three years now. Um, a really good blend of young talent that's going to play for a long time, as well as the great veteran leadership that you like to see. I expect Georgetown in the Big East to give Denver a fight. I can see the Georgetown-Denver game deciding who wins the Big East to go into the Big East tournament. So it sounds like it's going to be a lot of the cohesiveness of the freshmen and the seniors of that Georgetown class to really see how that success is going to play out. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and Coach Warren's a very good coach. He made some national championship games in Maryland when he was a defensive coordinator there. So he knows how to prepare his players to get them ready for the big moments. Right. And he knows what, what good leadership looks like. Um, so I think he's finally got his culture set up there, and I expect Huge. him to, to make a long run with Georgetown this year. And like I said, I think they can scare Denver a little bit, especially in the regular season, and then who knows, maybe steal a bit in the Big East tournament to get into the dance. Great. Looking forward to seeing how it turns out. So, all right, you know, here's the big one. Final four picks. Yeah. What are you thinking? I'm um, going, unfortunately, as of right now, i got to go heavy favorites. I'm going to lay the chalk a little bit here. <laughs> but I'm going to take Duke. I'm going to take Notre Dame. I'm going to take Denver, who are the top three teams. And then the one team that I love this year is Virginia. I know Virginia's going to have a bit of an issue with the faceoff X right now, but mm -hmm. I really like the fact that Tanner Scales and James Pinnell are coming back. I really like the fact that Virginia's younger defensemen that are now sophomores got huge minutes last year because of that Scales injury. And now all of a sudden you got a really strong group that's played in huge moments, and they've had some bumps and bruises and learning on the way. And I think they're ready to make the jump over. Um, with the others, you know, Denver, Notre Dame, and Duke, everyone loves them this year. Um, they're just so talented on both sides of the ball, and they're so well coached. Um, so I would be shocked if those three schools aren't in there, you know, fighting it out on uh, championship weekend. Exciting. Yeah. Uh, and then for a championship pick, I'll uh, I'm gonna go with the Blue Devils this year. You know, they, they had a they had a tough season last year, the way it ended, losing mm -hmm. it at home against Ohio State in the first round. It was the first time they had made the Final Four in I think eight years. Wow. Which is yeah. an incredible feat in this uh, in this era of college lacrosse. Um, so I'm going to go with the Blue Devils. I think they're too, too focused with Miles Jones coming back after mm -hmm. that tough loss. I think he's going to be a man on the Firing machine. all cylinders right yeah, now, Yeah, I too. think they're going to come out of the gate. they got Coach Janowski, who's arguably the best in the game right now. Um, there's just a lot, of, a lot of good talent on that team. Very well coached. Expect the Blue Devils to hoist the trophy on Memorial Day. Exciting. Can't wait. Well, Connor, thanks for your picks. Um, everyone, check back next week for our Skype session. We'll be traveling, so we're going to come back again and hear Connor's picks and uh, feedback for the weeks. And um, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash for recruiting advice and continued picks from Connor. And uh, thank you for your time. Look forward to hearing back from you all. Thanks, Connor. Yeah. Glad See to you be soon. here.